episode four, week four, Poppy's Kitchen. We got Matt from Providence here joining us. Uh, also, Adam, uh, Adam the Jew, we got this week. Um, so, Matt, thanks a lot for coming on this week, man. It's um, really good to see you. Uh, to be honest, you're one of my favorite Minifans. Um, I met you in uh, in one of the first um, Minifan events ever, the uh, the courthouse in Woburn, yep. and then mm -hmm. in uh, in Sherborne and uh, in Madawaska. And you've just been a really genuine, just nice guy every step of the way. Um, and well, uh, yeah, you. happy to have you on here, man. You're one of the few people who think I'm a nice guy, so I appreciate that. I'm happy to be on here with you. Well, I don't know. I go off like, yeah, I go off my own personal experiences, and every single time we've interacted, you've been a gentleman and a scholar. So uh, yeah, ha you, very happy to have you on. Um, Adam, how are we doing today? Thank God, you know, I'm good. I'm uh, a little a little worse for wear, but good. You know, I, I echo the same sentiments. You know, never really uh, met you in person, Matt, but uh, you know, I I'm definitely excited to talk to you. Definitely excited to hear. Uh, you know, what's been going on with you. And, you know, I think that I, I can echo the same sentiments in the sense that uh, anytime we've interacted, you've always come out as uh, as genuine and as a nice guy. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about getting rid of the hate. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I kind of need this praise right now. I've kind of <laughs> been dragged down in the dumps as of the last couple of weeks. So this feels pretty good so far. I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> a small part of me was semi expecting an ambush here, but, you know, it seems like that's not going to be the case. No, not not for me. No. <laughs> so how you been? Uh, how you been handling the whole uh, quarantine thing? It's you know, it's been tough. I'm working every other day at work right now, but it it's made it extremely difficult to keep up with the show. I mean, sitting at home with my girlfriend, yeah. it's uh not exactly easy to throw on the show for three hours and pay close attention to it. So I've been running a little bit behind. It's been a little bit more difficult to keep up, but you know. I'm I'm glad to see that everybody is uh, kind of stepping it up in my absence. It seems. Yeah, it's something I wouldn't really have realized, but the the quarantines like killed my ability to listen. You know, I figured out ways to get it done, but I realized I listened to, like majority of my listening was done when I was out of the house, just driving or doing whatever, mm -hmm. working. And when you're uh, when you're at home with family watching a kid, it's really tough to get the time in. But um, I think it's had a lot of effects on the community too. Like uh, people have been more aggressive i feel uh you get that kind of um malaise and misery that's taken over some of the discord and stuff like that it's been uh it's been rough but um yeah i mean yeah, even I mean, aside from people's you know inability to keep up it seems like there's been that extra layer of tension in the minifan world ever since this quarantine started everybody's just a little bit more on edge it seems so that kind of brings us to my you know uh, one of my first questions um so Kirk came out on the AMA. I'm sure he said it on the show as well, but he came on the AMA in Discord uh, a couple of days ago. And basically, said that he was fed up with the infighting. He, um, you know, he wants us focused on uh, on enemies. Um, so the the latest one to kind of pop his head out is uh, is Riccio. Uh, you know, we talked about it a little bit when we recorded the roundtable, but um, you know, you've been around for a while. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're an e, like an EEI guy way back, right? Uh, I was a listener back in the EEI days, hardcore. Uh, I never really jumped into the Twitter aspect of it until right around, I would say, a month or two into Kirk going over to Barstool. Uh, I just never really realized that it existed until then. And I was like, you know what? Uh, it's time to get involved. But nonetheless, you're aware of pretty much all of the enemies, you know, the the, the history yeah. of, of the warfare that we've had. Exactly. As yep. um, so what do you think of um what do you think of this whole Riccio stuff? You know, when you when you compare it to the enemies of past, the big battles and actual foes that we faced, um, we got this idiot out here, Riccio. I personally think that I mean I'll go to war, you know, I'm ready. Uh if Kirk says that it's justified, I'm I'm good to go. But it does seem like one of the weaker um just not much of a challenge. It seems like an idiot to me. Yeah, and I'll do it, but I don't know. He, he, even Menners makes him look look like a like a <laughs> kindergartner, you know. I mean, Riccio. How would you compare, you compare him? For, like, yeah, Riccio is just scum of the earth, bottom feeder, as bad as it gets. I mean, we've heard it all from Kirk. You know, he leeches off of his brother. He uses derogatory terms in some of his articles that he's written. He regularly will drop the n bomb use derogatory terms for homosexuals. He doesn't really have a filter when it comes to being, you know, a respectful human being. Like he's dragging Kirk's family into the whole fight now. And it's like, you know, there's a line. And when you cross that line, you're going to feel the Minifan's wrath. 
and he kind of let himself disappear for a little while. And I'm feeling like this time it was going to be a mistake popping his head out. Do you also think that there is something to the fact that, you know, Murchison never, you know, he, he went at Kirk, he spoke to Kirk and basically told him, you know, there's nothing that you can do. This is not going to end whatever. Um, but you know, with Riccio, for example, every time he, when he was on enough about me, when he was on the Minifan show, um, anytime he's actually confronted, he turtles faster than anything you've ever seen. And mm-hmm. I mean, do you, do you think there's something to that in terms of, you know, just who his character is? Well, that's because deep down, he's a fan of Kirk's, I believe. And, you know, he has his own little shtick where he thinks he's a character in the world who is like a more intense Mayo kind of just a contrarian, someone who will fight with Kirk, push back and give Kirk a hard time. When in reality, he's just a piece of shit and nobody, nobody likes him. You know, even the contrarians of the show today have their fans. Nobody likes Riccio. I don't know if anybody in real life actually likes Riccio. How could you like him? Look at the guy. Everything he does just comes from a place of being a piece of shit, really. Yeah, he just seems like a really just bo- – like he's depraved. He'll go as low as he needs to, but uh, there's just not much capacity there. He's just going to go off the – like within – a couple seconds of having the mid fans attention. He's just gone as low as possible. You know, he pretty much, you can't go any lower. It's not all he's going to do. So I just, I hope that we um, set an example here and crush him quickly. And then you know, we're able to move yeah. on to some more interesting stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. even, even Benjamin Albright, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I assume that this process will kind of fade quickly. We'll, we'll defeat him quickly. Um, moving onward. Are you, what are you excited to kind of see? Um, who you're excited for us to see uh, see us go at, you know go to battle with like the globe EI who who do you want to see yeah next? all the usual suspects you know the globe top to bottom I know Kevin Paul Dupont is getting a little heat <laughs> on uh, on Twitter right now for saying that he wished that the uh, the protest outside of uh, is it City Hall in Boston is yeah. that where it's going on yeah. uh, he wants them all to get taken down by the murder hornets um, you know showing his true colors uh, as globe as it gets. Uh, it's the usual suspects. It's the globe. It's Shirley. Murchison's kind of disappeared, but you know he'll pop up eventually. Um, and you know what? It ties right back. Uh, Riccio himself is an associate of Globe members, so it's just it's just that whole group in general. You know, we gotta we all gotta start getting together and work as a team to take them down because I've seen some of the things that you know the guys in Discord are capable of. They got some really talented tech guys in there and just a large group in general who, if we all start putting our minds together, we're going to come up with some really creative ways to fuck with these people. It's It's been scary already in my uh, in my Twitter feed. Like The amount of information and details that have been gathered in such a short period of time are just scary. I would not... I wouldn't want that wrath. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but uh, a, a video circulated today of Riccio... Uh, he was speaking at some courthouse or before like a state Senate or something about some sort of rent relief for like the arts and whatever, but he let off with his address. Yep. So if anybody wants to, you know, maybe print off some <laughs> flyers and scatter them around that neighborhood, I think that's a good start. Matt, you got me ready to run through a wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so kind of talking on that contrarian topic, you know, when you have the people like Mayo, um, you know, MHB to a certain extent. Um, what are some of your, 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 you know, what are some of your thoughts on the, on the current contrarians we have out there? You know, you got, you, you kind of see the whole gamut being ran for people like DG, DJK that don't really seem to be a, a genuine Minifan. Like uh, I saw him on Mike and the Minifans, wasn't really aware of a lot of the details. A, a lot of the notes were kind of mm-hmm. just going over his head. Didn't seem engaged uh, on like real show stuff. Then you have people like Manners and Mayo that are pretty authentic. You you know they don't miss a show. They re-listen the shows. Um, I'm kind of realizing more about that now because you know doing a YouTube show, you don't want to just be agreeing. You don't want to be coming off like Mike. Mm-hmm. You do kind of have to mix it up, bring a little bit of that contrarian energy. And I think I've heard you kind of talk about that on Mike and the Minifans that even if you don't believe in a, in a uh, in an argument 100, percent you'll still kind of just you know, take that angle just to be more, you know, just to have more fun, not just yeah. make it like, you know, like an agreeing fest. What, what's that kind of been like? Is there like a, are there, are there ups and downs to doing that? Do you kind of get some enemies in the, in the community when you, when you, when you do that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And for the longest time, you know, 
uh, I was viewed as the complete opposite. I know the comments and Mike and the minute fans would always be Matt never disagrees with Kirk. Matt will agree with anything Kirk says, which actually as of late, I find the tide kind of turning on that. But yeah, th- there's always going to be a place for the contrarian and some people, you know, they get a they get a little uh, a little jolt out of starting a fight or getting people to talk some shit back to them. Like I would say Mayo is probably the biggest contrarian there is in the world right now. And um I mean I like the guy. He's a great guy, but we we have our little battles because it's fun. It's not going to be fun if you sit around and play slap and tickle with everybody all the time. I know like you guys I, I'm I'm a ball buster. I'm sure you guys are too. So I mean, that's what we're all here to do. We're here to bust some balls, have some fun, and take down some assholes. Matt, you know, speaking of being a contrarian, you know, and and you've sort of alluded to it a little bit, you know, you've sort of over the past, you know, weeks, months, whatever whatever it's been, um, you know, looking at your timeline within the KMS world, you know, you went from almost being the president to a shitty joke that, you know, probably went too far from people's reaction to, you know, the last time we saw you, you were battling Kirk um, and you've been pretty quiet. And, you know, you, you, you mentioned it and I completely agree with, you know, I've got little kids, so I, I get it from a totally different angle, but you know, it's a lot harder to consume everything and be as vocal now. But, um, you know, do you look back at, at, you know, your sort of roller coaster over the past few months and, you know, do you have any thoughts about yourself as a contrarian or as not, um, do you do you have any regrets about you know that the the way that you've uh, you know you you sort of uh, travel the road? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a contrarian. Um, if I disagree with something Kirk or anyone else says, I'll, I'll voice my opinion and I'll let you know that I disagree. But I just try to come at it from you know. I know people are going to say that this isn't true, but a genuine point of view where I might amplify my disagreement with something doesn't mean I'm actually you know head over heels, just upset about it. Like I'm going to flip out. I might amplify that a little bit. And as far as Kirk, my little spat with Kirk the other day, all I know is, you know, we had our fight in turn. Nick went and made another mistake after that. And then (laughs) a caller called in and, you know, basically echoed the exact same point I made to Kirk. And he took it much, uh, he was much lighter on that caller than he was on me. Um, You know, it is what it is. I guess I guess it just got him at a bad time. Have you gone through periods where you're like your activity has kind of waned? Have you have you gone through periods where you've kind of just taken a step back and and uh been like, you know what, I want to take a break from this world for a while? Uh not necessarily a break, but I would say probably the last month or so I've kind of taken a step back. Um I've been far less active. Um and I think a big part of that is just the difficulty that I've had with keeping up through the whole quarantine. I mean, I want to be out, you know, I want to be downloading that thing right at 11 o'clock every day, listening straight through and jumping on Twitter to talk about the latest, whatever it may be. But as of late, that just hasn't been a possibility for me. Well, honestly, I really respect that because MHB will just take random shots, not listening to episodes for, for days and days at a time and have no mm-hmm. idea what he's talking about. So I think it's the smarter play just to not talk about uh Yeah. I, if I don't, not. if I haven't listened, I'm not going to partake in the conversation. I feel like that's, you know, that's something that I'll leave that to whoever else. I want to know what I'm talking about when I talk about it. I don't want to just throw shit against the wall. Matt, can we talk a little bit? about your prank calls yeah sure Um, do you want to just like walk us through how you how you did it i mean did you do a lot of research into these uh into these networks before or these shows rather before you you know called in were you spending hours just waiting you know how how did it happen you know what and that's actually that's a good question because i actually saw a barstool advisor put something out the other day saying like a live prank phone prank phone call show would be awesome I really honestly couldn't disagree with that more. (laughs) Um, There's a lot of time put in for maybe 30 seconds of payoff. Uh, When we would get the 50 state challenges, you know, I would literally just go into Google and type in talk radio in whatever state. And you get a whole list of them. And I would just go from one to the next, just checking. Is there a lot? Is there a local non syndicated show on this? What, what's the show schedule looking like? Who are the hosts? And then I just call and call and call. And sometimes it might take, you know, 
five channels before you even find a station that's taking calls. And then, you know, maybe you get on, maybe you don't, maybe you sit on hold for 45 minutes and then you get dropped five seconds into your call. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, it's a big, it is that now that is a roller coaster, those calls, because sometimes you're deflated because you're like, shit, I just sat on hold for an hour and didn't even get half of my, you know, whatever I wanted to say in other times you'll get right through, you'll put it down. And then you're like, fuck yeah, that was great. I got it. They're going to love this. And, uh, but no, the prank calls, man, it's anyone can really do it. I like to like, you know, script out, not a full script, but frame something out, kind of list out some of the, the, uh, references that I want to get in there and then try to come up with, you know, a local way to work that in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what do you think of the the kind of the current um, genesis of the show? You know, we've gone through phases where, uh, you know, songs are really um, emphasized, where prank calls are emphasized. Um, you know, the theme is kind of always ch changing a little bit. What do you think of the current state of affairs? What do you think of Cullen and how many calls the actual show itself is taking right now? I thought Cullen was really good. Um, it was, I even Kirk acknowledges, it was a little difficult to follow just strictly through like an audio format. But... Like he said, it was just joke after joke after joke. And it was great. It was great to see all the Minifans get together and do something together like that. Um, I hope there's something more to come from that in the future. Um, and, you know, it sounds like Krasinski might be involved. So that would be <laughs> awesome. That would be the best. So I hope, I hope we eventually see that. Um, and now, did you say also, how do I feel about the amount of calls taken? Right. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't dislike it. Uh, every once in a while, it can get repetitive. You know, you don't, you can't hear ten minutes beforehand unless you've been sitting on hold that whole time, so you don't really know what's been talked about. Um, so yeah, it can get repetitive. Um, there's certain calls that aren't my favorite, but I'll listen to it because you never know what you're going to get out of Kirk, Mike, or Steve. So that's uh, that's the reason to pay attention, anyways. Yeah, it's a, it's an intelligent way to kind of pivot when the news cycle is so limited, and to and to create content, uh, you know, kind of out of thin air. Yeah, for sure. Um, Adam, you got any uh, more questions for this guy? Yeah, I got one last question. Um, you know, as for a little bit, you know, you were sort of the face of the Minifan versus Mincel war a little bit, right? I kind of um, started it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm I'm trying to be nice here. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, I was I was curious what your thoughts are on it now. I mean, do you do you wish that in an ideal world, you know, you mentioned it before when we all work together, we do some really amazing shit. I mean, it's it's crazy, and we're all psychotic. But you know, we do some amazing stuff when we work together. Do you do you do you have any regrets about that, or do you wish that there was just one? Everyone was just a Mina fan, and enough of this Min Cell Mina fan bullshit. Like we're all just Kirk fans. Uh, yeah, I mean. Like you said, we are all Kirk fans, and I think it was, you know, taken a little more seriously than it really, really was. Like me and John have talked. Me and John talked be like before our fight. We were cool. It was, it was amplified. I like those guys. They're cool. Ba, ba is like, you know, <laughs> the nicest, dumbest, coolest <laughs> kid there is. And who, John, do, who doesn't love ba? Yeah, and as <laughs> as much as you know, I might disagree with some stuff that John does. The kid works his ass off for the show. Um, Phil, I don't really know that much. Um, I mean, we've argued a handful of times, uh, nothing serious, just some bullshit, but I think the biggest, the whole Genesis of that Minifan Mincel war was just each side, not realizing the other side was joking. You know, everybody thought they were ahead of the other on the joke. And, yep. uh, it just it spiraled into fucking something crazy that didn't need to happen. Entering well with the uh, with the comment, blow, blow was a two seed. <laughs> you know that people forget that people, people forget. forget. Yeah. Some people say it was the perfect bracket. <laughs> Some have said. Some have said. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's always going to happen. There's always that ebb and flow. People coming and going in this world, and. Uh, you know, ups and downs to it. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you're a really genuine Minifan. Um, uh, 
thanks a lot for coming on the show and uh yeah great having you man thanks for having me this was uh this was fun do it again sometime How are we doing today? So I've learned that you guys don't know about cars. So I'm going to tell you a thing or two about cars because I know a thing or two. Well, mainly two things about them. First, how to open the doors. And second, how to open the hood or the latch or the gate or the, whatever you want to call the damn thing. But you just open it up like so and then you're in, baby. You are in. Look at this. You are good to go, motherfuckers. GM had the great idea of putting a 3.5 liter truck engine into this piece of shit, so let me explain it to you. Since this is a six cylinder, obviously, each cylinder has its own gas tank, and those are them right there. So every time you fill it up, you're filling those up. Just a very long, intricate system of tubing. Here's where your iPhone parts go, and where you get your AAA batteries if you really need to. And here's where your catalytic converter in blinker fluid goes. You do not want to be low on blinker fluid. This is where nicotine juice for jewels go. You gotta get your salt-based nicotine right in there to keep the car healthy. This is where you charge your iPhone in an emergency situation. I just highly advise from using that connector. This is essentially an iron lung setup for cars with polio, you know. Older type of cars, you won't find that in newer systems. This is where my oil cap would go, but it broke off. This is the AC compressor, I mean it makes things hot. This is your alternator which really just provides power to the uh, windshield wipers. See that little doohickey? That little doohickey's a monster. Just a transmission spark plug anyway. This is where you heat up water. The hot and the cold gauge in your car is actually for cooking soup, if you didn't know that. Now I'm gonna show you how to check your engine oil and differential oil and transmission fluid all in the same stick. First thing you do is grab this green, you know, T handle here and pull it up maybe two to three times. Wipe it off, only twice though. I mean, inject it at least 70 times, but only wipe it twice. And then after the second wipe, put it back in and see where the level is. See how low it is? Yeah, I need oil bad. Oh shit, I really don't like this lady either. So a lot of billionaires open up their mouth, so I figure I'm a poor shit person, so I'll do it too. I mean, this took six extra days to get to me. I'm assuming it's because of how well they fucking secured this. This took forever to open up these little, like, $9 worth of goods, as you'll see in a second. I mean, it's only a set of mono-wound uh, mandolin strings, which provide a nice tone, completely different over steel and aluminum alloys. But the main, like, purchase of this was these $3 belts for the sewing machine I have. It's from 1941. Can you believe these were 3 bucks in their OEM? That is insane. This episode is brought to you by Shaved Arms. Shaved Arms. For when you finally had enough of that nuisance hair and want to swim faster. Speaking of that sewing machine from 1941, here she is. I already put the belts on it, but look at this casing. Isn't it beautiful? Since I haven't seen my Soul Cycle instructor, instructor I've kind of gotten a little weak, as you can see. Uh, it also weighs like probably 60 pounds. I'm assuming it's all cast iron. It's got plenty of storage space. And you want, you want, you want more storage space, motherfuckers? Here you go. The whole seat is all storage. Boom. It's made in Canada. It's old. Buy it. Ah, the Raymond J, whatever that says. I don't know if those numbers are right, but that's why I walked the 5K. Uh, just what it says. But we're in Methuen today on this beautiful Bon Voyage. Those locks I could totally pick. And, like, do you think anybody abides by these regulations? Do you think they not feed the waterfowl? Steve would feed the waterfowl. I mean, I would feed the waterfowl. I would spend many hours drinking underage on these benches. But, statues limitations. And then they put these here, so they like they want you to get drunk and stumble and smash your face and just bleed out into these, I don't even know, and then just jar it on the rocks, and that's where the shit gets into the water. We don't have these in Lawrence, you just let your animal crap or chits. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, but since it's so close to Lawrence, it can't be beautiful. It has to have some shit, it has to have a stairway to nowhere like that. I mean, these people don't know that they're being filmed or they have a mask on. In 93, Radio Shack was selling cassettes, Type 4s, for like 5 bucks a pop. It's a good deal. One laser disc player, 400 bucks though. I mean, here's a nice flag of America. This lady is the shit though. She was not happy when she looked back and saw that I was recording her, but then I was not happy she was driving her kid there. I actually slipped here, as you can see, but it made sure not to drop the motherfucking camera. Rule number one, don't drop the gear. So, I mean, the biggest risk to Corona was probably me slipping in there. But look at these, like, this must have been a bridge or something. It's really kind of pretty looking. Kids go back here to do drugs and whatnot, as you can see. But it's not very safe. There's a bunch of rebar literally everywhere. 
In this newly built establishment where the global elite meet and sacrifice children and do other crazy things once a year, like they do in that place in California, there's no snow giant eagle statue. When I see people sitting on this, I fucking yell at them because it's disrespectful. And we can't even get free books due to corona. But I love trucks pulling trucks pulling trucks. I mean, come on. When's the last time you've seen a truck pulling a truck? Well, not, probably not that long ago, but the truck was pulling a truck. down the street and my sex foe. Hey man, how's it been? I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, pretty good. You hear Kirk say when I'm making enough content? Yeah, I did hear something like that. But you see the other news? Oh my god. Is that where I think it is? Oh my god, yes it is. Oh no, help me, it's Scientology. Oh my god. I'm going to come and get you confirm today. You have one choice. My choice is to get the hell out of here. You have no choice left. Zulu can lose you. Send us your money today. Scientology, we will win every single time. For everyone in information technology, here's a reminder what you're missing and what you're going to be coming back to. I'm sorry. That's got to be a tough life, man. In Unsolved Crimes this week, we have this weird video submitted to us by the Sherburn and Madawaska Police Departments. It appears to depict a man fighting with what appears to be a horse or a deer, but this man also appears to be able to transform into some type of automated vehicle. Clearly an odd type of vehicle only a Russian spy would have. Then it appears he reverses over this horse, loads him up into this vehicle, and steals his meat for further harvesting. What sick person does that? I bet he produces podcasts. So does this what being double jointed looks like? Because if it is, I guess my thumbs are, and I don't like it. Week four, Papa's Kitchen. We got LK, Adam and Jersey, Pat and Lawrence, Cameo Blind Mike. Welcome everybody. Um, so yeah, our uh, our feature guest this week is going to be Matt in Providence. Uh, he uh, he started off the show, but uh, we're also very excited to have on uh, Cameo Blind Mike this week um cbm is a guy that i've gotten to know one of the first people that i kind of got to know in this world uh through discord uh and a really interesting guy not that he fucking wants to hear any of that but uh anyways um like one of the main things that um that cbm and i bonded over at first was uh was like beer so we're both kind of like big beer nerds uh you know we like driving around and uh you know waiting in line for different, different beer releases and stuff and driving uh, around drinking beers <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You like driving around drinking beers. Get that in Will's car. Um, yeah, we also hang out with Mutt, and uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> um, I mean, everybody's gonna have a fall guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, is anybody else here like a craft beer guy? I mean, K CBM and I are like basically big nerds. Anybody else into it or, or what? Uh, I like scotch, uh, whiskey, but like, I prefer scotch. I'm yeah. a hard liquor guy. Yeah. I mean, Second I to that. I would before I lost the gallbladder, but now it's just pretty much just like cards, like these alcoholics. Yeah, or this is Alcoholics Anonymous, actually. <laughs> this is what well, the segment is. <laughs> there's um, there's actually a lot of like really, really good craft beer in New England. Uh, um, you know, CB CBM and I have talked about it, you know, in depth. But um, yeah, I mean, so the something that we we were talking about recently is uh, CBM is uh, he's been brewing lately. Um, and he's uh, he's been learning more about that. He's actually, you know, considering brewing a beer, or he's looking into brewing a beer, uh, kind of for this uh, for this world. Um, so, uh, first question, is CBM, like, uh, how how long have you been brewing for? Like, how did you get into it? How long have you been doing it? So, um, about ten years. A uh, buddy of mine, like every other weekend, we would have a share. Each of us would bring a different beer. You know, we talk about it. We trade for beers. And one day, I went there, and he just had an extract brewing kit, which. Um, there's a couple of different types. There's all grain, which I do now, but he had that kit and we just started brewing. Every time we share, we brew a beer, we brew a beer. And I just got so used to it. And I started copying his recipes and doing it on my own. And then I just did it myself. And now he doesn't even brew and I'm, I'm the brewer, at least, you know, between me and him. So CBM, do you have all the equipment, you know, all the things necessary yeah, to brew? I, I have a really small home brewing 10 gallon. I can brew 10 gallons at a time. Okay. Um, and then I can get enough fermenters to do a ton of stuff. Um, but that's usually what I do. I do five to 10 gallons and it's more of a hobby, you know, right. um, like to pass it along to friends, like to bring it to barbecues, like me and Poppy were talking about, um, we're going to do a beer. Um, we're going to, I want you guys, to, well, I have a couple of ideas in mind yeah. Yeah. and then I have an idea for Justin's barbecue. We're all bringing <laughs> at least one keg, maybe two. That's good. Uh, 
So do you want me to bring up th those two beers for the poll? I had three, but I cut it down to two. Yeah, so if you get down to two, we'll uh, – how about this? Throw uh, Pass along the beer, the beer ideas that you have, and what we'll do is we'll throw up a poll online on Twitter. Uh, Twitter or Discord, one of the two. We'll figure it out kind of after show, but probably yeah. probably Twitter. Um, so, yeah, what are the two beer ideas that you're uh, you're thinking about? All right. So I really want if we if I we do this one I am sending it to Mike and he's drinking it. Mama oh. Geary sticky stout. It's going to be eight <laughs> percent. There's going to be tons of vanilla chocolate. Yeah, maybe we'll throw some coconut in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other one is a Steve's a liar session ale, but it's actually going to be a huge double IPA. Hop to shit. So it's going to be like oh yeah session. Which, yeah. I don't know if you guys know in the craft beer world session just means something between like four or five percent that you could crush right. all day. Yeah. So you know it's gonna it's gonna be a liar beer. It's like an like an all day IPA or something, yeah. But like Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, everyone's gonna be all like shit faced. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what much. else is new? I mean, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I like both of those ideas. And then the one that I'm gonna do for Justin's barbecue when we tear his parents' house up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, no. I mean, I want to be called private Just security and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be called Justin's barbecue master. I've got an orange vest. Amber oh, hoppy ale. Not so what? So that's say that again, CPM. What's the yeah. Justin one? Yeah, because I'm. Yeah. It's going to be Justin Justin's barbecue massacre amber hoppy ale. So it's just going to be a red beer, yeah, really light but very hoppy. It's going to be crushable, where people can't get too hammered, but you can get hammered if you want. Now, how does how does the red beer go with the red snappers? <laughs> that's a good question. Perfectly, perfectly. It will be perfect. Malty, you get you know <laughs> sweetness, and you get um. The favorite from the hot dog, perfect. So, awesome. Steve, you um, two questions. Uh, how many like batches of beer have you brewed so far? Jesus, over ten years, probably an average of one a month. Well, you know, Holy hundreds. Shit. Yeah, hundreds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, I had no idea. Help, yeah, helping buddies out too. I've I brewed a lot of beer. You drinking anything good tonight? Yeah, I'm doing. Um, I went to Long Live, one of my local breweries. I got a growler. They're doing takeout. Pretty much where you just walk up to the door and they hand it to you. It's called the Promise. It's a double IPA. It's probably honestly something that I would um, almost make like the Steve's a liar. Just really murky, really hoppy. It pretty much tastes like straight up pineapple orange juice. Just so, that, classic, that classic like hazy New England style IPA, you know, tons of yeah. juice. And, yeah, yeah I, I love that style of beer. That's initially what got me kind of like hooked in this world. Tonight I'm drinking a uh, Marie by uh, Hell Farmstead, which is a uh, unfiltered German style Hell's Lager. This stuff, you know, as you probably are aware, Hill uh, shut down because they don't want us scumbags bringing our germs down from Boston, <laughs> New York, and all that up to uh, pristine Northeast Kingdom. So uh, sure. they've shut down. They're doing a tiny bit of distro, but it's, you know, it's very, very hard to get. The only place I know of is Armsby Abbey in Worcester that has their beer. So, uh, yeah, they're doing growler fills. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I love their beer, drinking some of that. Oh, that, that's a great beer. Hey yeah, CBM, yeah. how how long does it take you to brew a beer from start to end? It depends. Um, I could do an IPA like that in ten days. Be ready, mm -hmm. green to glass. It's called. Cool. So hey, get it in the keg, carbonate it. Good turnaround. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it depends. Like some beers, I've done stouts that have conditioned for six months. You know, you put bourbon in them, uh, bourbon, whatever. Well, no, we're talking. It all depends. But I always try to go quick. <laughs> So speaking of bourbon, uh, I know that you and I are also big fans of like bourbon. You like the Pappy, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, yeah, for sure. The Scotches That's and right. all that stuff. So you know, I feel like there's a lot of similarities, um, a lot of parallels between like the the tight knit craft beer and craft whiskey world, and also the Kirk Minahan world. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of like really cool people in kind of both worlds. Generous people, happy to share, trade, all that stuff. Um, and there has to be a bunch of us that are kind of invested in both. So, you know, I was thinking if we can kind of get, you know, if this COVID stuff dies, dies out in a decent time from now, you know, let's say four five, six weeks, you know, we're allowed to do a small meetup. I would love to kind of do like a small bourbon or beer meetup, you know, in the New England area, you know, somewhere between like Worcester, Providence and Boston, where we, uh, you I'm know, sure. we share, we share some stuff, we sample some yep. stuff meet up, you know, share common interests. So if if the stars align and the world is kind of back in, in working order, you know, a uh, month and month or month and a half from now, I think, uh, you know, any of you that want to come out, uh, try some of the CBM's beer, if you want to bring your own beer that you brew yourself or bottles you want to come and share or whatever, 
Um, I think we should definitely look into trying to set that up. You know, Jack Savvy has been a great uh, host to the Minifans. There's yeah. obviously Long Live. There's Trillium that people met up at, uh, uh, you know, the Matawaska, you know, B team, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so basically we got CBM brewing a beer just for the Minifans. Uh, you know, you can go vote on Twitter on what kind of style you want to see. Um, we're probably going to do some kind of giveaway where – uh, you can win getting a free growler mailed to your house. Obviously, if you prove your, you know, age and all that shit, uh, so we don't violate any laws. Um, and then we'll have a, a meetup uh, set up, uh, so you know we can kind of get together, share some scotch, beer, whiskey, uh, whatever. Um, sounds like a good time to me, man. It's a I mean, great idea. Fuck no. Love it. Hey, we can even go down to Connecticut. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just a suggestion. Listen, I'm not the expert here, but you might want to rethink your Steve's beer and sort of mm -hmm. make that one. Be a German ale? I don't know. Just a thought. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could use, I could use um, a German malt in it for sure. Um, <laughs> He'd like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, so yeah, let's let's move on. Um, so I was in the AMA this week on Discord. Uh, Kirk mentioned this a bunch. Kirk is pretty much uh, fed up with the infighting that kind of dominated last week. He wants us to all get on the same page and, uh, you know, pretty much be going after the common enemies. Um, that being EI, that being the globe, uh, you know, Riccio, um, all of that. So with that, let's bring in typical dummy. I hope this fucking asshole is ready. Bring him in. <laughs> He's one of my beer buddies. There hey, you go, yeah. Hear that music dummy. Is. Hey, I can uh, just okay, yeah. rotate your camera a little bit. I'm the host. You guys listen up. So, listeners of the show will know <laughs> that uh, the dummy is our chief investigator. You know, he's 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 the fucking chief detective. He's basically you know, like he's basically higher than me in the show. So, dummy, welcome back. Uh, can we, I just we, we, we missed we missed you. No, you didn't. Can I just say? Um, <laughs> If you guys want to meet up with CBM for a beer, it's a huge mistake. <laughs> I've been there, done that. He's a he he fuck, I showed up there. He had like five thousand dollars worth of beer. He fucking loaded his car. He I, would, I, I, I wouldn't share it with his ass either. So I don't. Dude, he fucking him. literally ripped right, the butt, right, threw the butt right, at right, me, right. and then at the end with, and then at the end he's just like, "Hey, I got to go to my second cousin's birthday party." I'm already no, late. no, it was my brother fucking, from New York. He the came up for the weekend. My what brother came it? up from New. York. All right, all right, all right, all right. CBM's a great guy, dummy. You know, you're my guy, obviously. All right, so dummy, the reason that you're here is because you know when we're talking enemies, you're the guy. There, there's, there's no, there's no second place when it comes to enemies, you know, in this world. So, dummy, Kirk wants us to stop the infighting. So I'm gonna put a stop to that. No right chance. Now. See, no you're my guy. You're my guy. So okay. No, 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 no. The fighting is gonna continue. The fighting is gonna continue. But we need some real enemies, not just bullshit infighting in in this world. So who you got? Who do you want us going after? Going after? I did come um, up with a short list. I, can't, hey, I do have a short list. Tell me, can I say you just one that, thing? You yeah. Turn your camera. What? You might want to rotate your camera. Yeah. Who? You. I kind of like sideways. it sideways. Oh, uh, whatever. He's fine. He doesn't know what landscape yeah, is. We, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. covered cover stuff somewhat. Matter. He doesn't, doesn't know what landscape is. Leave him alone. Yeah. If it fits the dummy name. Fine. There you go. Oh, okay. Turn it back. There you go. Turn it back, dummy. It's fine. That's easy. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have 45 degrees. All right. So, sorry. Back to Pops. Back, back, yeah. Back, back to enemies. I want, you're the investigator. You go, you, you go after people. You're, you're a fucking attack dog. So, He's uh, Kurt made it clear he wants the infighting done. You know, he wants to go after real enemies, EEI, Globe, Riccio. Um, so give us a little bit of history. What enemies have we gone after in the past that you really appreciated us going after? And who do you want to see us going after uh, right now? Yeah, how about just one? I, if you can show me one Minifan who actually reads the Globe with a critical eye, that'd be great. I read fucking right. articles every day where the comments are blocked, where they remove the comments. Uh, where the the whole premise of the article is a joke. Other than the show, fucking, I don't see any of that anywhere. Sometimes Featherson posts something, but I'll read a joke article about some fucking bullshit, and the comments are deleted because they because they know it's a stupid article that they're going to take a ton of flack for. I don't see any mini fans posting shit. That said, I do have a short list of enemies that I'd like to go after. Let's go, Mayo, Mayo, Mayo. Yeah. <laughs> TJ Tubby, fuck that guy too. Oh, listen, he's a busy guy, man. Fucking, uh, he's taking private jets all over. He's running a business. He has a kid. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> so, all right, anyways, all right, all right. 
right. yeah, I'm all about it. I guess that's my that's my. If you guys want to fucking pick up your your torches and pitchforks, how about you just read the fucking globe? It's a fucking joke. Read it online. You'll see the the stupid of the fucking uh, article is. They'll they'll have the comments deleted. Uh, it's just you know it, the whole thing's a rag. Uh, it's really it, be exposed. Is the globe free or do you have to pay? You have to pay. So here's the deal: you sign up, and then you call the next day and say, uh, "Hey, I'd like to cancel." And they'll like they'll say, uh, "Hey, you know, what about for four dollars a month?" And then you'll go up too much, too much, and then they get you all down to like not literally. I think I pay ninety nine cents a month for it. All right, right. so I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward this. So how about Richio? So I thought I was like hoping that we had like a a a reasonable like enemy in Richio. Then I listened. I listened to the Minifan show. I listened to the Enough About Me. Richio is a fucking idiot. Like he's not a ten as intelligent as Murchison. Manners makes him looks like a fucking like like he's Bill Gates. <laughs> like Reach is mm. dumb. Like why are you <laughs> worrying about this guy? He's stupid as shit. Like he's he called uh he's basically thinks everyone's a racist. He he's just dumb. I was so disappointed that I wanted an enemy we can get galvanized behind and attack. Reach is not the guy. Well, Kirk Kirk said that himself. I mean, he's he's said it before on the show. He's said it a bunch of times that. If it was just Riccio and it wasn't Murchison, nothing would have ever happened. That Riccio is a no, joke. No, no. That it's, it, I mean, he's just an idiot who just has a shit ton of time to do stupidity. Um, but, you know, I think that the reason why we're all jumping into this right now is just because he crossed that line. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's just an idiot. Like, I don't know. Anybody can cross that line. Doesn't mean they deserve any attention. I don't know. He did a fucking idiot in my opinion. Um CBM, I mean, I'm with you. CBM, with what do you what do you think? What do you think of Richio? You are an OG Minifan. Uh you've been around for a while, you, you EI and all that. What do you think of Richio? Am, am I am I just uh discounting him? Do you yeah, think he's, he's, a, he's a joke. He just wants clout. You know, you know, you hear it on Enough About Me, Kirk pretty much just laughs at him. You hear him on the Minifan show, they pretty much just laugh at him. He has nothing. He just wants I think he wants to be part of the world and that's it. He likes the contrarian he likes to be a douche. He likes to he has no points. Everything he comes up with is just bullshit. Nothing to back it up. It, it's yeah. funny to listen to, honestly. Yeah, he's, he's just a, a sad, pathetic old man. You know, he's almost six yeah. years old. Like, go fucking retire in Florida and enjoy the beach. You know. I think he is sixty now. So, yeah. I mean, uh, before we finish this, uh, this before we kind of uh, move onward, um, Pat, are there any enemies that you? What do you think of this whole Riccio enemy thing? Um, uh, Adam, you kind of got your, your piece in, but uh, I just, yep. you know, let let Pat speak. <laughs> Thank you, <John>. Hashtag. <laughs> I mean, you don't you 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 broke some like moral, just basic principle guidelines, and you're making Twitter burners and posting, you know, what the shit he was doing. Uh, you don't do that. That's that's a no go. Um, but as far as like me having enemies, no, I haven't really built up or pissed off anybody enough yet. I don't know. So. I think I think sneakers sneakers got out for you, dude. I don't know. Anyways, well, Daddy, um, I was paying attention. That I don't honestly usually don't give a fuck, even if somebody does say something. Anyways, um, so this kind of we're gonna move on to the next point here. Um, so, you know, in this world, there's a bunch of different characters, right? You know, you have the classic um, OG minifans like the Steve from Providence, the um, you know the Kevin from Bristol. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to, I would go on and on, but I'm going to miss somebody and I want to piss anybody off. There, you, you guys know who you are, the Featherstones of the world, you know who you are, right? There's also the uh, the contrarians, the people like MHB, like Mayo, like uh, Dummy. You know, you know this is the classic kind of, what, what did you say, Alka? Like Dummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think I don't the know. Anyway, no, I don't know. Katrin's a part of this, right? Katrin's, it's just so, nitpicking. nitpicking. And there's also, there's also the, the attention seekers, right? So in that attention seeker category, I think we have Adam the our, Jew, our... LK. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we, I, think, I think the classic attention seeker right now would be like DJK. Like, I don't think he's too <laughs> invested in the world. He doesn't really know the show very well. Like, I think he's just here because he's in between jobs. He he's like, all right, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of catch this wave here. I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna yeah, latch on like like a parasite. I don't like. I heard him on Mike and the Minifans. There were a ton of references that were going over his head. He doesn't sound invested. He doesn't sound like he listens to even half the shows. Maybe just like the highlights. Um, so, you know, I want to kind of kick this out to everyone here. Um, what do you guys think of the trolls? What do you think of the contrarians, the attention seekers? Um, are there any trolls out there that you enjoy seeing what they're doing? Like it's entertaining to you? Are there sneakers. contrarians that sneakers. you like that sneakers. are entertaining? Uh, what do you think of attention sneakers? I'm going to start this off with you, LK. 
Topic is trolling, contrarians, attention sneakers. What do you got? So, Dami, just to let you know, I'm tracking my cloud points here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Buy I don't... cloud right now. Just for you, exactly. Buddy. So, I think everything that's uh, said and done on a funny way, you know, to have fun is valid. You know, like Dummy, I don't think Dummy's a contrarian. I was kidding. But he's a, a shit star, right? And that's fine. You know, uh, there, there are people that, that thrive on that. There are people that are just nice. There are people that are just trolls. I don't. I think sometimes Snickers is a troll, but uh, in his heart, he's not. He, he joined a bunch of Zoom sessions. He's the nicest guy. You know, I think Prague could also be a... Uh, Prague? Consider- Prague. Prague, yes. Prague masturbator. He could be a, <laughs> considered a, a troll, right? Are we making fun of accents now? <laughs> no, 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 okay. no, no, no. Just can I can I actually add if we are making fun of accents? Did Kirk's painter pay you for his ad read? Of course, no chance. No chance. Yeah, you he, you owe him some money back. You mispronounced like Kirk seven other words. It. it is. You didn't even phone number our website either. I don't think. The what? And also, every time you say kick, you went punch. What the fuck's up with that? This is a punch. Like, You're like it, has, punches, it, it, it has a real <laughs> kick. It has a real kick. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Listen, oh, yeah, uh, I'll take one of those uh, ramens. Uh, uh, I'll take one of those ramens. Uh, are, are we changing <laughs> subjects here or not? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. Bob's fault. Bob's fault. So, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to kick you. I'm sorry. All right, so, the fucking DJK kid, right? Uh, <laughs> Poppy, one thing that I value the most is honesty, you know? And th- this uh, little brat is going behind my back, telling people and asking people why someone is eating spicy food on the channel. Uh, why are you guys posting that there? So, DJK, let me tell you something. You know, you love saying that you're 23 years old and you're very accomplished. Let me tell you this. I started working when I was 14. When I was 17, I, I was hired for a $40 billion multi-company, multinational company. Okay. When I was 20, I was transferred to the U.S. And when I was 23, I was a manager of a team managing a, a project in the whole Americas. Right. So, in my book, your six-month uh, morning overdrive show is is considered being a loser okay you are a loser in my book right but but i'll give you a chance when i was 24 i was speaking three languages okay so let's see if you can match that you fucking asshole people co- people uh compare you to mayo and manners but mayo and manners are manners are good people they, 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 real they have though. integrity they, they know the they talking have, about too they listen they, the ha- they have integrity because if they have a problem they will tell you on your face right they, 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 they don't go behind your back and, and say shit behind your back. So he's not no, no more than a spoiled little brat, right? And if he doesn't he's, like he's that... A, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if yeah. he doesn't like that, you, you can suck my dick here. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suck a so. dick. Drop that hammer, baby. Yeah. All right. EBM, That's you're up so. Um, My favorite troll I, mi- I actually missed, BAC, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love him. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. P.A. Dummy's Poor like leaving right now. Poor. <laughs> <laughs> Some up no, home, boys. I thought he was hilarious in Discord. Yeah, he got belligerent and it was funny. He was funny on Mike and the Minifans. He was like best. an asshole. This is the best. One of my favorite trolls. Poppy, yeah. bring Justin. Bring Justin. All right, all right. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin, you pick somebody to sub out for a second. Put him, at, put him, put him back in when you're done. But I want to hear Justin on DJK. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, so I just wanted to jump in real quick. And Justin, just... I, heard you, I heard you applied to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Uh, I actually <laughs> did not. But uh, I just wanted to say something real quick. So the first segment of the show I just was how Kirk said he wanted to start focusing on real enemies. And Dummy, did you say that we should subscribe to the Globe? <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> did. Why? Yeah, well, I... His just name is Dummy one. for but, a reason. Hey, you can DM me. I'll <laughs> yeah. give you my subscri- hey, listen, you can DM me. I can give you my login information. I don't think um, they like. I, I think, like, I think no like one Netflix. should be giving any money to the globe. If 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 it's ninety nine cents a month, I I don't think we should be telling people that. Yeah. To subscribe to the globe, I think I think that's a a bad bad bad. Hey, what paper? What paper? What paper do you get your newspaper from around here? I don't. You, no, I mean, what you gotta do is, is you I know you don't. VPN I know you don't. Just I'm sorry. Break the paywalls. There you go. Yeah. You get Whatever. You can hit. You can yeah. hit me up. I'll share you. I'll share my login information. I don't have a problem doing that. Yeah, I also don't have a problem fucking paying ninety nine cents a month for the paper of record around here. You should tweet just out saying the, they're uh, the enemy. The password. What's up? You should tweet out the login information. 
It's Jackson sixty nine. Just make sure it's not like a password you use for more than one account. I, I just, I, uh, I just it's for all of them. I just think it would. It, yeah, it, change it, that. Kirk listens like to that. this. It's driving crazy. If uh. All right, Justin, uh, fuck this. I want to hear your takes on DJK. What do you What do you think? You it, know, DJK, he's he's I have a question. It, so it, you, you, you compare you compare him to Mayo. You compare him to Menners. Mayo and Menners are authentic Mena fans. You you know I fuck with Menners, but I, I actually love Menners. They're authentic Mena fans. They listen to every single show. They they pay attention. Yep. Do you, do you think that DJK is an authentic Mena fan, or do you think he's just some fucking schmuck in between jobs that's looking for you know a little level up? I don't know. I just I just think he's to- he's just a uh person who just made a show for the youtube and he's just he just wanted to try to get his name out there so he came out talking okay. a lot of shit yep. uh I, I but I, I think this goes against the whole first part of the segment where you guys were talking about getting away from infighting it's like yeah it's like we can tell djk to suck our dick but let's just let's just all focus on the common no, no I, I like him i like him i just don't think he's a real minif- fan but i don't know what whatever, whatever i don't really care i just said yeah back i mean like, the mistake the, the infight is one thing right i think it's like waste of time but like integrity and being honorable it's different you know I mean, and this I, guy's i'll never i'll like, never gatekeep the kirk minahan show to anyone or what oh, question, well, you should, you should, you should question, do you think that richio is like a worthy foe uh i think right now uh we should treat him like a worthy. i, I think Calling him a worthy foe and treating him like a worthy tho- foe are two different things. Uh, I think we should treat him as if he's on the Murchison level just to bring him down that much quicker. But I do not think that he is on the same level as Bob Murchison. But I think that what we should do is we should uh, go after, if he wants to bring up Kirk's family, Kirk's wife, these things like this, we just have to show them how strong we are, how uh, what we can find on the internet, and maybe get his brother involved, get someone else. We need to. You know how Murchison had his wife ended up saying, hey, cut the shit? And Murchison yeah. ended up cutting the shit. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get someone in Riccio's life, whether that be his brother, his parents, his drug dealer. We need to get someone involved, <laughs> and we just need to get Riccio just the fuck out of this world. Yeah, so, yeah Riccio's Richo, Brian's brother works for the fruit company, all right? So, yeah. so that's you guys got to work on that. But so I'm gonna I'm back out and bring him cameo. All right, thank yeah. you, Justin. Appreciate all your help. I, I, I actually just want to jump on one thing that Justin said, where he said that he doesn't want to be the gatekeeper. And I, I am all for that. I don't think it's com- like, I hated the whole, I've been a minute fan first, or we need to have a, a, some sort of system where you can only listen if you're a true minute fan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I think that's all bullshit. My, it, I've only had nice in- interactions with DJK on Twitter. It's about the only thing I've had with him. The one thing I will say that keeps bothering me is the whole, spiel about i've been in this for three years yeah I've been doing so a show for three years dude three years is jack shit you don't know so at arrogant. all what you're talking about and to sit there and then be like oh i can't believe kirk thinks that it's a good idea to do a show for three hours like come on everyone knows that's terrible and i'm a social media genius when it's clear that i mean look at the videos he's posted before they got zero views and obviously he's here to try to get a name for himself and that's fine listen that's totally fine the real issue is that, you know, he doesn't know everything and he thinks he does. And that leads to issues where you say things and do things that piss people off like LK, who's a genuinely nice guy and you're talking shit behind his back. And then, you know, you have to force <laughs> Dummy to pretend to like you because he's got to be the contrarian, like LK said. <laughs> no, and but I take it we're easy. All, we're all it easy. Here. <laughs> no, here, here's Listen, the thing. I mean, you're just just, throwing me off. You're throwing me off because you're sideways. I, don't, I, I, I would a, never tell people don't go uh, make shows for the YouTube, right? Uh, I think totally. Kirk, is the, Kirk is the only one that can say yes or no. And Manners, Manners would go on his show and say, cancel Life Loser. That sucks. And that's fine. You know, like, I can take criticism. But, but say in front of me. Say on my face, right? Don't, don't yep. go behind my back. That's my only problem. Listen, yeah. I don't know how my camera looks, but let's just say, you know, time served matters. If someone just showed up to Anne Frank's attic, she would be like, yo, I've been hanging here. <laughs> All right? <laughs> you don't I, just I don't, show, you I don't, don't even know what to say. You don't just show up. That's a well played. Well, <laughs> All right. All right, I don't even know what the fuck to say to that. Uh, but I, I think there is, there is legitimacy there to, uh, you know, to... I don't. Know, I just don't want to hear somebody like talking shit in a critical way about the world if you don't even like know what you're talking about. Like, like even when MHB came in was like well, get, spitting I'll... fire at Phil, and he said like, "Oh, I haven't listened to the show in like X amount of weeks." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, yeah. don't want to hear this, dude. Like, like you don't. Yeah. You don't have all the facts. It's like somebody going to a fucking court case. At, you know, at court, 
But yeah, like I haven't been, I haven't like really paid attention to the last like four proceedings. But I'm here. I'll throw you a bone. I'll throw you a bone. He he bashed Discord, and then also oh, has no. never tried it. You know, right. it's a uh, it's a you know don't knock it if you haven't tried it. You know, and that then dirty dog yeah. Discord. That dirty dog. <laughs> that dirty dog. You dirty. Well, dog. He also Underworld. Kirk, Kirk has said time. it before over the past like couple of a couple of weeks, especially a lot. But he's been talking about how he builds the show in a way that. You have to walk here every single episode. You can't skip an episode yeah. because you'll miss things. And then if you listen to what uh, DJK was saying on Mike and the Minna fans, he was talking about how, yeah, you know, I mean, I think I'm just ready to take a break from listening to the show now because I didn't like yeah. Colin. So I've done that before. I've taken a month off and then I come back and I think it's so much better and blah, blah. And it's like, well, you know, th those two things just don't align. Well, there is some predictableness to the show. So, like, you know, I... I listened to Colin. I listened to the intro to it. I thought, like, okay, I like the gimmick. I like the shtick. Not my thing. I'm not going to spend my whole day here. And then the next day, it was quite clear, okay, well, we're going to talk about that show, the entire show. And again, I didn't listen. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to skip that. So there are shows where I feel as a fan, I'm just like, all right, this one's not for me. Um, you know, I think I'll survive right. skipping it. Uh, that, and that's, I a good, that's a good segue. So, like, Kirk basically came out and said, anybody who doesn't didn't like the Colin show, like, you're better off just, like, moving on like if you didn't like that show like you're just not going to like the rest of the stuff might as well just move on i'll be a clean break um but i do think a lot of people that say that they don't really mean it i think they're just trying to be like trolls so on the topic of that we kind of talked about contrarians like djk let's move on to the trolls um what do you guys think of trolling in this world uh does it entertain you does it ever go to a point where you think it's like not entertaining um yeah, what's what? What do you guys take on on the hardcore trolls or just the trolling in general? Uh, I'm gonna start off with ULK and then Adam. I don't have an opinion. I think uh, you troll all you want, you know, uh, as long as it doesn't get personal and it stays within the realm of the world. But it always does. It always does, though, right? Like you know, like yeah, blow, but then, blow, but then you ignore. Like it pretty much always does. They, yeah. they, like again, like dummy. Uh, I know you have like stuff like with Mayo last week. I, I I went I went on Twitter and said, "Hey, yeah, point always gets personal." No, hold on. I yeah, yeah. I I said I said, "Hey, Mayo, you were born a playboy." You know, like I made a lot of jokes. He came to me and said, "Hey, I should have I should not have gotten so upset. I know you were joking." And I said, "I'm just having fun, Mayo. You know, it's not it's not true. And if someone thinks it's true, it's not. You know, we are all having fun here. And I think what Mayo did to you might might have crossed the line a little bit, dummy. But I think it's all with good intentions. You know, even like sneakers and, and Prague trolling. You know, on Discord, I think it's you know it's within the realm of the show. Adam, your turn. Yeah, well, I'm gonna flag sneakers here, and and I'm gonna say it in the sense that uh, that uh, you know, I actually really like it. I have very thick skin and, you know, that's always been the way that me and my buddies joke around and the way we've always had our relationship. So, you know, I, I think it can be entertaining. Like you guys said, sometimes it goes over the line. This is where we're all adults and, you know, we should be able to act like it. And if you overstep, you overstep. Someone should say, hey, listen, that was shit move you did. Apologize, move on. We don't need to turn into like a fucking high school drama where, you know, we're all just... Uh, you know, bitching and moaning. Although, again, as someone who likes drama, I enjoyed sitting back and, for example, watching <laughs> you and Mayo go at it. Dummy was quite entertaining during the AMA as Kirk was talking about how we should end the infighting, and the two of you were going back and forth. It was <laughs> awesome. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I it's, take it for what it's worth. It's just you know, we're all here for the same purpose. We're all here to have fun as a break from reality. And like you know, uh, my view is don't take it too personally and you know for me i know you have to really cross a line i mean like fucking a dummy just made a holocaust joke and i don't give two shits i'm sitting here laughing <laughs> at it like you know it's it's just let's just that's, move like yeah, let's just have was, fun that's exactly what i was about to ask you it's like well the, you know, the trolling in general is pretty it's just what it is it can be really fun but you sit around and you watch it and you, you'll, you'll watch it and everyone's individual you said you're thicker skin and probably the most uh but like you could see like it Come occasionally like uncomfortable to watch sometimes you're like ooh God. but um i but also it makes, feel it like once fun, i agree it, it, it kind of makes it fun but if you're yeah. like once you're willing to enter this put your you know, world this enter these platforms put your face out there you kind of have to expect it you know yep. absolutely absolutely yep. yeah um one of the more interesting kind of uh example uh cbm i'm gonna get to you as well um one of the more interesting kind of um instances of trolling that i've seen has been um 
you know, this whole Greg Hill thing, right? So that was like, <laughs> that, was that, was, that was amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know what Greg Hill really did to us. He didn't really do anything, but it's just fun to watch. So even when somebody is like not guilty of anything, like he didn't do anything to us, I still find myself just, you know, oh, well, hold on. He, 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 he did he did something to us indirectly, right? Because he yeah. he did something to Kirk. So we are oh. all listening to Kirk. What did he do to Kirk? Oh, he he, he was an asshole to Kirk. You know, wow. once he, he left he the show, he said he was nice. He said he was nice to him. Basically, he said he's never oh, had a problem with, with Kirk Hill. No, but no, after the, no, I disagree. No, 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 that's fine. I mean, like, I don't. I think it's hilarious to watch Greg Hill get trolled, but Greg Hill did nothing. I mean, he's 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 made Kirk. sniped comments here and there on his show where he yeah, made yeah, failed references of the and shows that Kirk Kirk made. I, 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 I hate his show. I think it's boring as shit. But he hasn't done anything to us. I, what what like about? I, said, I still think it's pretty long. Long. I still, guilty, I still guilty by control, association. But... He's part of me. Yeah, exactly. Guilty by association. Exactly. Oh, no. yeah, the Ned Devine, who's the Ned Devine's guy? You know that got attacked because he told him he liked Kirk or whatever exactly. it was. You know, Some, guy yeah. Some guy named Sean. Some guy named Sean. My, I didn't. I never. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see Justin get punched at his barbecue. I'm just you know, whatever. <laughs> ben Devine's. Who? I'm, I'm going down to watch some fucking. Sign me up. Yeah. Fuck Justin. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring my safety vest for Justin's barbecue. He's and throwing me under farm. the bus for paying ninety. <laughs> and it's not. It's not even an enemy. It's it's Will who wants to do that. His his equal or his you know, his equal whatever. So whatever. Um. All right, boys. Uh, CBM. You got anything on trolling? I, I don't know. Not really. I mean, I really did enjoy that um, Greg Hill thing. I was laughing my balls off when he was trying to, like, if you guys watch it, he's trying to, like, pour his drink. And it's, yep. the dude told him, oh, just use, you know, they, like, poured, uh, they had, like, two tea bags and they put gin in. And then they were supposed to use that. Greg Hill ended up using that plus more gin. And then his drink looked so much lighter than the other guys. He was like, mm, this is delicious. It's such <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and the whole time, people are on the uh, comments saying, we can't hear you. Yeah, you know, yeah that was the funniest part. Can you hear up? <laughs> that's the type of shit like i would it was, love it was to stop the trolling each other and do that can i just ask a question about mayo since i since it got brought up yes sir. okay so i i was mad uh that he had uh big comments about my family multiple times and you know he said he thought less of me because i drew a line and said you know what you can fuck off with that shit fucking no need to bring it around here and i regretted that i don't actually think that was right i think i should have let him troll me and um he also has made comments about people getting pictures from other plots of the internet that ha doesn't have to do with the KMS show. So he does get a little muddled. Now that we have Brian Riccio posting about Kirk's family from pulling pictures from outside the world, is Mayo going to have to think less of Kirk since Kirk has drawn the line there? Or is Mayo just a fucking fuckwad? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask him oh, just to say that? What? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I only said, I only said that because you guys are all staring with your mouths open into the camera instead of responding. So. Well, no, I mean, no, I, you know, listen. Uh, what do you want me to say? Dummy, what do you want me to say? You, you know what I want you to say, Kirk, Latino Kirk? I want you to say, you know what? You know what, dummy? You're right again. Right again, Listen, all right. All right. So two things, two things I want to end off with here. Uh, dummy, you need to get us some real targets to go after. You are the investigator. You're, you're the fucking detective. Give us some real targets to set our sights on. I want to. I'm going to do some attacking. Um, also, next week, tune in. We're going to see some footage of CBM. He's going to give us some footage of him uh, brewing the whole process there. You can kind of keep keep up with us week to week. Um, you know, come try the beer. Maybe win a uh, win the chance to get a, some of the sample to you. Uh, also, pay attention to the Twitter. We're going to vote on which beer we're going to do. Um and yeah, I'm gonna put out to you as closing closing thoughts. Our our uh, round table is gonna be long this week, but um, whatever. Fuck it, we're having fun. Anybody else want to? Uh, anything else they want to say? Not really. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, the, the, only, the only thing I've got, the only thing I've got is that I just want to, you know, getting back to the infighting versus, uh, you know, going after enemies. I think that on Friday. We proved with just how fast we got a couple of those uh, Twitter accounts shut down that the yep. Minifans, Mincells, let's just call it all of us, you know, Minifans or whatever. Just, we're all together don't, don't as a united. Me. Yeah, right. As, as a united front, we are fucking powerful. We yeah, are fucking absolutely. awesome. We are stronger yeah. together. And enough of this bullshit inside stuff. You know, can, it's, it's easy to say that after we just, you know, rip DJK for a little bit, like uh, Justin said. But hey, that's all part of the game. You know, like I said, nobody should take anything too personally unless you go that far. And uh, you know, fuck it, we're 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 a team, and we need to all fucking remember what the what what we're all here for. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 I like DJK. I just, yeah. when people are not like a, like you gotta, you gotta know the details. You, you can't be taking shots, people. And then like, not like he chucked out halfway through that mic in the minute fans. He didn't know what was going on. He was very, I don't know. That, that just annoys me. It's like, if you're going to come hard with that fire, at least be able to keep up with the rest of the discourse. So whatever. But he's 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 fine. He's young. He's doing his job. You know, uh, at least uh, at least be a man and then not. I mean, I, I ran my uh, seventh and eighth grades t- daily production studio for like you know, I ran the boards and like some cameras and shit. Does that for two years? Does that make me almost as qualified? As <laughs> almost more qualified. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you have yeah, a microphone tattooed right. on your on your arm? <laughs> no. How how many cuts can you edit into one video? Oh boy, that's we should have the fuck out of this. I think the no. most I'm at is like thirty something. No, fuck, fuck, fuck this this little spoiled brat. Let's cheat <laughs> some decks. You guys yeah, have to because be, that's where yeah. the footage ended, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Listen, I'm always Team LK. Yeah. All right, um, CBM. Thank you for coming on. Tune in next week. See some more beer. Everyone, thanks for tuning hey, in. Thank you, guys. Cut. All right, so I might cut that. I might cut that where I would just like. Oh, anybody else have anything else to say? Uh, just because it's already going on long enough, but uh, 